Hi! Hi. I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making Iris, the Spirit of Light. She was a commission piece we made a few months ago, so let's get to it. For this doll, we're going to use Michelle Mermaid from Ever After High. We'll be making a magical sauna for our internet friend Mihalina, whose art name is Iris Animae. She created a character for each of her personas, including a spirit sauna, an arrow sauna, a shadow sauna, and a magical sauna. As you can tell from her name, magical sauna is the element of magic, light, and optimism. You can check the Iris Animae Facebook page for some cute artworks and doll customizing, and her YouTube channel for short animated stories, available to watch in Polish. Let's transform her design into a doll. I'm rerouting her hair with Plum Gem Nylon from the Doll Hair Emporium. I'm taking a strand of hair, wrapping it around my finger, threading the needle and poking it into a hole in the head. To make the part, I'm marking where I want a new hole and making it with a thick needle. The hair needs to be secured from the inside and I'm using a universal polymer glue for it. Let's make the face next. I start with a brown watercolor pencil to sketch the eyes. And when I'm satisfied, I add black on top. I received a few artworks of Iris to use as a reference and I can tell that they are made by different artists. So I wasn't sure how to portray her in my version. Mihalina said that she's giving us a free reign of redesigning this character, but I still wanted to capture that calm but cheerful energy that she has. I wiped off her brows after two or three layers of face-up because I didn't like her expression and they were horribly asymmetrical. I know that they should be sisters, not twins, but in my opinion they were not even from the same family. I'm using dark blue pencil to make her lashes because I wanted to add a more fantasy vibe to her makeup. When I'm not sure if the face looks good, I look at it in a mirror. It helps finding the symmetry of the eyes. Then I'm adding a lot of white, first using a watercolor pencil to make highlights and then using acrylic paint to brighten the white of the eyes, paint tiny lashes, details and catch lights. I remember when I was painting this face, I had a thought that my face-ups are a bit boring. Inspired by Dragon Age elves, I designed and painted a magical henna-like pattern on Iris's forehead. It has a spot for her signature crystal. I'm starting with a skirt. I measured the waist of the doll and figured out the circle skirt math. Because it's a half circle skirt, I divide the waist by pi to get my smaller radius and just add the length that I want to it to get the bigger radius. Then I went back on what I just wrote down because I measured it wrong, so I recalculated. I've drawn out the pattern with those new measurements. I had to use this pencil and string trick because my compass was too small. I'm only cutting half of the pattern out because I'll cut it on fold. I added the seam allowance to the pattern and made a quick rectangular waistband. I cut this out of this eggshell satin or whatever this light cream color is named. I'm using a self-healing mat and a rotary cutter for this job. I cut the waistband on the bias in hopes that it will curve to the waist of the skirt better. I pressed up the hem along the long curve first, then stitched it down. I absolutely hate circle skirts on this scale because the hem is always so problematic. I also had some issues with the length and volume, so to the trash this goes. Let's try this again. I made it a bit less than a half circle this time and I'm cutting it out in two pieces. That's because the part of the hem that was not on the bias hemmed fine, so I only cut the bottom edge so it wouldn't change the grain so much. I joined the two pieces wrong sides together and then trimmed the seam allowance to about 2-3 mm and press it to one side. Then I put the piece right sides together and pressed again. I'm now going to sew this again, encasing the raw edge. 
This is called a French seam and looks very neat on the wrong side of the garment. I am now changing my machine foot for a pseudo overlocking one. I'm sure there's a proper name for it. Um, if you know it, feel free to let me know in the comments. I am going to run a, again, pseudo overlocking stitch around the hem of the skirt to have something to refer to when folding it up. I ironed the seam to relax the threads because nobody wants to stress down hem. I can now evenly press the hem upwards on the wrong side of the skirt of course. I returned to my normal presser foot and I'm aligning the edge of the fabric with the middle groove. I used the dial on my machine to set the needle a few millimeters to the left so I can get a nice and even stitch. Because the edge didn't look quite as spotless as I wanted, I will fold it again and add another stitch in the same fashion. While we're hemming, I hemmed the sides and the waistband sides too, and I attached them together at the waist. Then I decided to neaten up the sides, so I hemmed them again, now that the waistband and the body of the skirt are attached. The waistband is finished by turning the raw edge in once and folding the waistband in half. Or if you didn't catch the folded edge, you can just trim it like I did. The last step is adding a snap in the front so the skirt overlaps itself a little bit. Or is it the last step? The skirt was riding up a bit so I added an elastic going from the front under the crotch to the back. I tack it down to the inner layer of the waistband so the stitches are not visible from the outside. I'm using some pattern that I have in my stash to make the shirt. I cut it out of the same fabric and fray check all the edges. I joined the front and backs at the shoulders and pressed the seam open. I added a bias tape trim to the neckline by sewing in the first stitch of the folded tape, then flipping it over to the other side and top stitching it down. Next I hemmed the armholes and can now close the side seams. I tried the shirt on to figure out the length of the crop top. I pinned that down and stitch along the edge. I pinned the back to trim it down and hem one edge. I added some plastic snaps in the back because they're less bulky than the metal ones. I stitched them on the machine using a button foot. The original design doesn't contain wings, but she wouldn't be a magical spirit without something supernatural. My first idea was to make slim two-part wings from Angelina film, but this plan has failed. I freehanded a pair of wings from this thick iridescent vinyl that has three segments in two different colors. I quickly made a hole in the doll's back with a lino cutter and placed the magnet in, using aluminum foil to stuff the hole, hot glue to attach the magnet and epoxy sculpt to secure it inside. Then I'm sanding it and painting to match the rest of the skin. I also decorated the wings with iridescent foil so it's more sparkly and magical. I'm giving the doll a very subtle blushing with the same pastels as on her face. You can't say to a henna artist like me, my character has some Indian inspiration in the design and not expect to receive a doll with henna paintings on the hands. I'm painting it with white acrylic paint so it's not the main feature of the doll but rather a cool detail. She has some ornaments on the outfit and I'm going to paint it with 3D fabric paints from Arteza but placed into a cellophane cone as this is the technique I'm the most familiar with. I tried a few colors on the scrap fabric first and I like the combo of pink paint with white perlex powder the most.
It looks like very subtle pink embroidery with an extra sparkle. To add a bit of spice to the design, I wrapped a ribbon around her leg to create a garter. To make her sandals, I decided to utilize my 3D printing skills and I designed a shoe base that would fit an ever after high foot. I'm using Fusion 360 to design this. It's a very simple blocky type of sandal heel. I printed a pair of these and sanded them down to get rid of the printing lines because I wanted to cast them in resin. You can see the smooth one on the left and the unsanded one on the right. It felt like a lot of work to sand these down to perfection, so I'm changing the plan. I will coat these in UV polish to make them smooth instantly. Almost like roasting marshmallows! I glued the blanks down in some small boxes I printed for the silicone pour. I incorrectly measured the volume of silicone that I would need, but I'm accurately measuring out the ingredients. Don't be me guys, double check your maths. I'm mixing the silicone and the activator thoroughly until I get rid of all the streaks. Like seriously, how did I not see that this is too much? I banged the silicone on the table to release some of the bubbles. Then I pour the silicone from up high. When the silicone is cured, I release the mold from the box and trim any excess. Time for casting. I mix my resin, hopefully the correct amount this time, and add some Perlex powder to it. I use a torch on the resin to pop any bubbles and pour the resin into the mold cavities. I think I poured the resin a bit too fast and it bonded a little with the silicone, so I had to destroy the mold to get the castings out. The shoes were mostly intact though, so we can move along. I sanded the bottoms on a nail file to get a flat surface. I'm making a template for the insole with some masking tape. I can transfer it onto paper to make it easier to use as a template and cut it out of white craft foam. I used super glue and a strip of iridescent vinyl to make the sandal strips. I drilled a small hole near the heel part to insert a wire into it. I used a 10 minute epoxy to secure it in there. I can cover the ugly parts with the insole now and I'm using the same epoxy glue for that. With the shoe on the doll, I will twist the wire into some loops so it looks cute and holds the ankle. That will make sure the shoes will not fall off. To finish her hairstyle, I will curl the hair. I'm using jumbo straws and some hairpins and I pour boiling water over the curls. When the hair is dry, I'm freeing and separating the locks. After a bit of brushing and styling, they look like this. They are very frizzy at the end, so I'm cutting them off. On the reference, she has a delicate halo around the head, which is nearly impossible to do in reality. I tried a few methods with iridescent foils and vinyls and failed. My last hope was to make it from a wire. It's going to be attached to the head with a pin and I'm decorating it with a piece of iridescent foil. For some more sparkle, I'm adding rhinestones. More rhinestones! I really like how these wings looked with the body, but now when she has hair and the outfit, they're barely visible. Let's try and see if we can do something better. 
I came back to the first design with two slim parts. I made a frame from a wire and sandwiched it with iridescent vinyl. To add a bit more detail, I'm drawing thin lines with the same 3D paint as on the dress. After connecting the pieces with a wire and gluing the magnets, they look like this. I painted the back with pink paint and now I'm decorating them with rhinestones. Looks so much better. The wings can now go under her hair and are way more visible. This is how she turned out. She came out super cute. Her design is nice and airy and light, so we decided to include her in our spirit mini-series. We already have a plan for a dark spirit, but what other themes of spirits and magical creatures would you like to see in the doll form? Four elements fairies? Or maybe something more unique, like a spirit of the lost socks? Let us know in the comments down below! Before she left to go to her new home, Iris, the spirit of light, spent some time with Prima, the spirit of nature. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Bye! -a! But what other teams of spirits and magical? <laughs> what other teams? The themes. <laughs> I made a frem. A frem. <laughs> 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 <laughs>